everybody come and sing or any kind of music for entertainment. I do have a Boudreaux and Thibodeau joke or two I can tell. Y'all promise not to throw anything. Oh, don't do a song and dance too? No, I can't sing and dance. Jim's here, he's our chief singer and dancer. I'll make no promises about throwing anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the quality of the job. <laughs> All right, let me think. Uh, let's see. I, I always try to keep one or two of these stuff back somewhere. Uh, Boudreaux and Thibodeau, you know, when they were boys, they were out in church one day, and as soon as church was over with, you know, they run home and throw on their overalls and head to the creek. So they got that, they're, they're lying out in the water, and they're laying back looking up at the sky, and Boudreaux says, boy, he said, you know, that preacher was talking about Noah this morning. He said, what do you think they did to pass all them days? You know, they were out in the water for a long, long time. Thibodeau says, oh, I guess they finished. He said, Fish? They couldn't have finished. They only took two words. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're generous. <laughs> Let's see. One more. Uh, <laughs> Boudreaux and... Is it Charmaine? Charmaine was his girlfriend, his wife. Uh, they got in an argument like people do from time to time. And so she was giving him the silent treatment. He thought, I'll just give her the silent treatment back. I won't talk to her either. And then it kind of got close to going to bedtime and he remembered he needed to get up about 5.30 in the morning to go fishing with Timothy. And Charmaine she'd get up about 5 so he wanted to leave her a note. So he didn't want to talk to her though because he didn't want to break the silence. So he wrote out a little wake me at 5.30 and he passed it to her. So the next morning he wakes up and it's about 9 o'clock. <laughs> and he looks over on the pillow and there's a note there wake up it's 5. <laughs> Okay, that's my two jokes. <laughs> um, we do have Chris Hicks with us today. Chris is our master sergeant, seminary student, faithful church member, a want a guy. Some of you know him, some of you don't. Uh, he's been involved in so many things. Uh, we've asked him to come and talk to us about some of the ministries he's involved with. He's been a part of a new startup ministry, uh, Hopes, uh, involving uh, orphans and fostering programs. Uh, he has a long history of uh, evangelism explosion and of uh, Awana work. So he has, uh, he has a good background of uh, work that he's been involved in and ministries that he's been involved in. And so please welcome him. Okay. All right, can everybody hear me okay? We'll move this right here to the back. All right. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to come just to speak to you for a, for a few moments. I know we got food in our bellies, so I promise I'm not going to speak for too long. Uh, when I start seeing eyes starting to close or something like that, I'll know, I know we're done there. Now, before we get started, though, uh, I just want to thank uh, Ron, wherever, there he is over here. Thank you, Ron, Brother Jim, and just everybody for, for coming out this morning and, uh, and being here and... Uh, you know, willing to come and, and spend some time together just as men. You know, it's it's very comforting just for me, I could say, to get up, be able to get up here in front of a bunch of men because, you know, I'm uh, active duty in the Marine Corps, so uh, I'm used to being among men. I enjoy being among men and uh, being able to relax a little bit and speak uh, freely among men, you know, so since we kind of understand each other, you know what I'm saying? So, before, before we get started, though, let's get something out of the way. Probably the most important thing. All right? Who here is a college football fan? All right? All right, raise your hand. Who here is a big, uh, who here is a big, uh, let's see, who's, who, I'm from Oklahoma. All right? So obviously, oh, you. Oh, you here. Who here, obviously we're Louisiana, so here's a, Big LSU. 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 We got a few LSUers in the house. All right. Who here's a big Gator fan? Oh, no. Got one. <laughs> hey, you know, I went to the Sugar Bowl there a couple weeks ago, so I became a Gator fan at the Sugar Bowl. So we had a great time there. Even though they got whipped up on, uh, I'm still a Gator fan. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Roll title. We got Alabama in the house. How about anybody from Texas? Anybody from Texas in here? 
That's good. That's good. Nobody from Texas. All right. That'll no, make the, that'll make the morning go easy. Mike, you say roll time? Yeah, you better be careful. Yeah, chance I get. Jordan might get back. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that's right. He's uh, oh, so I'm actually, I'm actually videotaping it on my camera back here, and I know he's a big Baylor fan, so I'm sure he's going to watch it. So, so we, so if he's watching, he happens to watch the video here. So, uh, yeah, go Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he made a comment the other night. If you guys remember, for, for uh, anybody was here on Wednesday night, I yeah. saw the little Skype thing. He made a comment about OU, so uh, he he's not an OU fan, so that's okay. Though. That's all right. Uh, so uh, yes, my name is, is Chris Six. I've been uh, my wife Lori and I and our family have been going and attending here at First Baptist now for uh, four four and a half years or so. We started coming here in two thousand and eight. And uh, first of all, though, uh, I'm a child of God. Second of all, I'm a husband and father to my wonderful family and wonderful wife. Third of all, I'm a United States Marine. Been in uh, active duty in the Marine Corps now for 26 years, a little over 26 years. Joined in 86, 1986, <clears throat> right out of high school. Uh, and, and like I said earlier, you know, I'm thankful that we're able to come here, a bunch of men, be able to get here and just relax a little bit and, and uh, listen to what I have to say and it's okay it's completely okay to raise your hand if you got a question about anything at all because we're I'm going to talk to you briefly just briefly this morning about orphans uh, about uh, foster care now at first you're probably thinking what what you know what does that have to do with a group of men getting together what does that have to do with you know this great breakfast that I just had. Uh, you know, what what is it? What what are you trying to say? So, I hope this morning that uh, I will be able to present a couple of facts to you, to uh, just to introduce you to a ministry that we just got started in, uh, and hopefully explain to you why it is important. Why it is important that the issues that we have with, I mean, just look at the family situation in today's day and age. How many do you think single are single parent families? I mean, that's like the normal now. Yeah. Hmm. Single parent families. What is happening to our society? And I'm trying not to get off on a soapbox here because this isn't part of <coughs> my speech, but seriously, you know, we men, we are the leaders of our families. We are, by virtue of being a man, you are given the responsibility to be a leader. I did. I did. So, what is happening to our society? What is happening to the families that are out there? So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit, uh, just briefly again. Uh, go over uh, orphans, foster care, adoption, things like that. You know, talk about. Uh, so what do we know about orphans? Anybody? What what? When I say the word orphan, what's what comes to mind? And this anybody can answer. There's no right or wrong answer. Fatherless. What? Fatherless. Fatherless. Okay. Somebody without a father. What else do we think about when we hear the word orphan? A child has lost both parents. A child has lost both parents. Okay. Good answer. Or either the guy abandoned. Abandoned. By both parents. Or, mm -hmm. or abandoned by both parents. Yeah. What's our, what's society's uh, stigma that they put on orphans? Somebody not wanted. Somebody not wanted. Yeah. Maybe somebody not worth much. So that's why they're not wanted. Yeah. Exactly right. When did that come into play? When did we start thinking? I mean, I know it's been way before any of us were ever, ever around. That that attitude has been around. You know, they used to, I think I was reading somewhere, they used to, take all the orphans and put them in a train and ship them to California or something like that. I think I remember reading something about that way, way back in the early 1900s or so. Uh, somewhere along the way, orphans were thought negatively of, maybe because people just didn't have the time to take care of them. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, did you guys know that there are two types of orphans? There are two types of orphans, and I'm going to explain what those are here in just a few minutes. Now, hopefully this morning we can just briefly talk about these items. And when we walk out of here, 
<coughs> hopefully we'll just have a better understanding of not just what the orphan issue is, but how we as men can get involved and we can try to make a difference. You know, this, this is a very real issue. There's a lot of things going on that I think sometimes we, we as men, we're in our homes, we're in our lives, we're doing our own thing. But, and if it's not directly affecting us, sometimes we get in the habit of not paying attention to it because it's not directly affecting me. You know, unfortunately, we just you get into that mindset. So when you think of like, I mean, there's so, so many things like uh, human trafficking. Super Bowl's coming to town, isn't it? Super Bowls are coming to town. Well, along with the fun Super Bowl comes the dark and seedy side of things as well. So there's an issue of human trafficking where that's like the modern day slave trade. That's going on. I mean, I, I tell you what, if I hadn't been educated on that, I would have never even known it even existed where women, children are coaxed into a life of slavery and they're, they're being threatened with their lives and, uh, if they ever try to get away from it. You know, things like that. So, although things like the human trafficking, the things like the orphans uh, that we'll talk about might not direct, directly affect you, they are very, very important and they need your attention. As leaders, as leaders of society, as leaders of this church, as men, period, we need to do something about the situation of our family situation of our families. Now, normally, I don't like to talk about myself. Okay, Adam? So I'm going to get a little bit out of my comfort zone here and tell you a little bit about me. I'm, so I'm going to talk a little bit about me. You know, they say that the number one subject you like to talk about is yourself. You know, so I don't normally like to talk about myself, but I'm going to for just one moment. And I'm trying to prove a point here. So listen up to me if you would, please. As I said earlier, I've been in the Marine Corps now for, for 26 years, going to be retiring later on this year. Uh, and I uh, enlisted out of the great state of Oklahoma. And, uh, oh, you, I was just referring back to that. Uh, enlisted out of uh, Oklahoma and uh, joined, joined the military. And I've been in it ever since. Now, I've deployed twice, two major deployments. Uh, to Iraq, the Middle East, Afghanistan. I've been over there, done all that. All the stuff you see on TV, I've been over there in the middle of it. Um, I've seen a lot of combat highs, the excitement of a country falling and restarting itself as what happened in Iraq in 2003. The electricity was in the air. Exciting. I've seen some of the worst stuff in 2005 where I've had to escort some of my fallen buddies home. I've handled, at one time, $56 million in cold hard cash, and I got the pictures to prove it. <laughs> I was escorted, escorting all this large sum of money uh, for, you know, we would find money that Saddam Hussein had hidden because he took all that money out and American money and hid it because he thought he was going to come back later and get it. Uh, but we would find it, and we would hold it and take our pictures with it, and then we would escort it to different towns and cities and pay the people to work. But anyway, so $56 million bucks. I've traveled the world, seen a lot of different places. Uh, here locally, I've been involved in, I heard Ron mention earlier, Toys for Tots. Uh, that's a Marine Corps ran program. Uh, we've collected toys. I've stood over at the Harbor Center trying to get involved in this community by families that would come and we would pass out toys to them. All right? Point is. <coughs> Community involvement there. Community involvement. So, Ronald Reagan, <laughs> Ronald Reagan once made a quote. He said that many people go through life wondering if they've made a difference. But Marines don't have that problem. And I'll tell you what, I don't feel like, I don't feel like I have that problem. I feel like I have made a difference. I'm also an FAA certified <laughs> private pilot. I enjoy flying, not just in the military, but in the civilian world and just on leisure. I'm also an FAA certified uh, mechanic on aircraft. So American Airlines, Delta, those big planes, I'm certified to work and fix those things. Uh, I'm certified scuba diver, been diving in Hawaii, Puerto Rico, 
I'm an auto mechanic. I love working on cars. I've fixed countless lawnmowers <laughs> to give them away to people who don't have lawnmowers. In church, I love doing things like designing websites, uh, outreach. I love evangelizing, hitting the streets, going and talking to people. I love working with children in Awana. I, uh, I've served on many different ministries. I've preached in the pulpit on Sunday mornings. I'm preaching tomorrow morning at Northside Baptist. Uh, so, and I love that, doing that. I've served on church staff as an elder before at my church in California that I used to go to. I've served as messengers for this church to the Louisiana State Baptist Convention, to the Southern Baptist Convention we just had uh, earlier last year. I'm a seminary student working on my undergrad, soon to be working on my Master's of Divinity. All right, maybe going to be a VA chaplain one of these days. Who knows? That's my goal. Now, I'm telling you all this about me, not because I think you care, but because I want to tell you one thing also about me. I'm adopted. I am adopted. All right. I am a product of the very same adoption system that I've come to talk to you today about. All right. So, you know, you don't. I've said, I've rehearsed this thing a thousand times <laughs> to get up here, but until you start getting up here and talking about it and then you say the words, something like, all these great and glorious things, and then say, I'm a dog. You, know, uh, you know, I hope you guys got the point of my whole entire speech in that comment right there. In that <coughs> orphans, people who have been without families, are not worthless. Okay? They can go on to be great things. All right. Um, born in Oklahoma. Don't know much at all about my biological mother and father. Uh, <coughs> never knew them. Fortunately, I was adopted at birth, so I went straight from my biological mother, who was a, from what I know, she was like a 15-year-old in high school, and I'm sure the dad, my biological dad, was probably just some teenage punk kid, you know, just trying to run around with his girlfriend, <clears throat> end up getting her pregnant, I'm sure. Uh, so, I was put up for adoption, and then my uh, adoptive <coughs> parents quickly took me in quickly took me in. So I was very fortunate to not have to grow up without a mother and a father. They weren't my biological, but to me that didn't matter. Didn't matter at all. Didn't matter. So what would have happened, though, if I hadn't have been adopted? What do you think? <clears throat> you know, we got this stigma of what we think orphans are going to end up being one of these days. They're kind of worthless. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't have ever joined the Marine Corps. Maybe I wouldn't have done all those great and glorious things that I just was bragging on myself about. What if I would have been aborted? Then somebody else have been up here talking today, right? <laughs> yeah. But seriously, though, what, what would happen if that would have happened? You know, then a lot of people that have been affected by things I've done might not have ever happened. Who knows? God only knows. God only knows. So. If I were to pick a thesis statement out of what I'm explaining to you today, it would be this. Orphan children have potential. They are not a wasted life. They are not a wasted life at all. Anybody here uh, ever known any orphans? Anybody ever? Is, has anybody here even dealt with orphans or foster care or adoption or anything? And what did you do, sir? My granddaughter has two. Two? Or she's or adopted? Yeah. Well, she tried to adopt them, but... Uh, she has a sponsor kid right now. All right, amen. My brother has two adopted children from Russia. Two adopted children from Russia? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we have a granddaughter that's uh, adopted a little girl. <coughs> okay. Have an adopted grandson. Adopted grandson. All three of my kids are adopted. All three of your kids are adopted. Amen. My uh, cousin has seven adopted children seven started mm -hmm. out as uh, foster parents and Amen. adopted seven Amen. Amen. all right all right has anybody here outside of me been adopted 
Tag, I'm it, right? <laughs> I'm it. <laughs> All right, guys, there are two types of orphans. There are physical orphans, which basically what we've been talking about this morning, children who don't have a mother or father abandoned. And there are spiritual orphans. Spiritual orphans. And those are children who are without the father. The father. All right, by show of hands, who in here is a Christian? Raise your hand. <laughs> Pretty much everybody. All right. Well, if you claim to be a Christian, then guess what? You too are adopted. Yeah. Spiritually adopted, that is. Right. So we're all, in a sense, adopted in here. Spiritually. Now, I picked as a verse for us to go through today. And I'm going to read it to you. I actually, uh, my Bible's sitting over there, but I copied it onto my paper here. Uh, the verse out of Romans chapter 8. Verses 15 through 17. Let me read this to you. It says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit by or spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are the heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So he says in here that one of the powers of the Holy Spirit is that he bears witness with our spirit. He bears witness from this passage. We find two glorious truths that I wanted to share with you. Two short, two short truths here. Uh, first thing, the Holy Spirit, as I read in verse 16, bears witness that we are children of God. We are children of God. Very simply stated, the Holy Spirit quickens our hearts with a perfect knowledge and complete confidence that we are children of God. So the Spirit is the earnest or is the guarantee that we're children of God. 2 Corinthians 1.22 says, Who hath also sealed us and give the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So the Spirit is the guarantee. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we are children of God. So the second thing I wanted to share with you that the Holy Spirit does for us out of this passage, in verse 17, the Holy Spirit bears witness that we are heirs of God. If God is truly our Father, then we inherit what it is that He possesses. Two, two things on that. We inherit, we are heirs too, and that is eternal life. Eternal life. Titus 3, 7 says, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So we are heirs of salvation as well as we are heirs of eternal life. Hebrews 1.14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? That is us. If we are adopted into the family of God, we are children of God, therefore we have hope in God. We are heirs to everything that He's got. We are heirs to salvation. We are heirs to eternal life. So how does it feel, though? Now, let's, I wanted to put that part out there uh, so I can talk to you as an adopted man. So now we're all adopted. All right? How does that make you feel to know that you are adopted into the family of God? Are you thankful at all for that? Anybody? Anybody? Makes me feel loved. Makes you feel loved? <clears throat> How does that make you feel? No, no. You know what? I didn't want to come in here and talk about feelings. All right. <laughs> but we're going to just for one second, okay? You know, to know that you are adopted into the family of God, all right, when you didn't deserve to be adopted, by the way, into the family of God. I didn't. None of us did. But you were. Out of love. How does that make you feel? What do you think? Gifts are different. You're accepted. You're accepted. <clears throat> grateful. Very grateful. <laughs> Comfortable. What was that, Jim? Very grateful. Very grateful. Gives us an identity. It gives us an identity. Yes. Yes. That is it. You guys are all absolutely right. But regarding physical orphans, though, can you imagine, you know, if, if we feel that good about the spiritual side, <clears throat> Can you imagine, just for a second, what physically, a physical orphan, someone without a mother and father, period, 
how they must feel? They probably don't even know God. I don't know that, excuse me. Uh, but what if they don't know God? And they don't have parents. What kind of hole do you think is in their heart? I can see how if some adult were to say you're worthless, I can certainly see how they would believe it. Because not only did they not know Jesus, but they don't even have anybody who loves them. I am very fortunate in that I personally did not have to experience any long-term sitting around with no mother and father. Okay. And you know what? I never thanked my mother and father for that. And they're no longer here. So maybe one day I'll get to, to thank them in heaven. But, uh, uh, you know, guys, my point being here is that this stuff is real. The issue that we have here in St. Tammany, the issue we have here in southern Louisiana, the state of Louisiana, nationally and internationally, it's real. It's real. The economy is getting worse, so people are less likely to want to take kids in, things like that. Uh, it is a real issue here in society. And as I said earlier, we, by virtue of being men, have a responsibility to God. We have a responsibility to our families because we are leaders. Just by being a man, we are leaders. We are leaders. We are biblical leaders. And God commands us in the Bible to take care of widows and orphans. So as I read earlier now, I'm trying to tie all this in now because I'm almost done. All right? I'm trying to tie all this in. I, I mentioned that there are two types of orphans. And what are they? There are physical and there are spiritual. There are two types of orphans, physical and spiritual. Right. Uh, as I read earlier, now the Holy Spirit does two things, right? The Holy Spirit bears witness that we are children of God, and the Holy Spirit bears witness that we are heirs of God, which means we've got hope. We've got hope. So you too can physically fulfill these very same things for orphans that are just right here local uh, in Louisiana, in the United States, or even international. You can make them feel loved as children are. You can, you can give them hope for the future just as spiritually we become heirs of God. You can give them something, some type of hope. So you can also be a role model as well. Be a role model. How much experience do we have in this room right here? I counted like, what, 21? How many guys have we got in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 25, I think. 25. Yeah. 25. How many years of experience do you think we got in this room right here? Several hundred years worth of experience in this room right here. All right. You have no excuse not to be a role model, except you're holding yourself back. Okay. You can make a difference, not just to your immediate family, but to other families, to kids. Give them a chance because you don't know they're not worthless. You don't know what they're going to grow up to be. You know, they could grow up to be Marines. <laughs> you know, they, you know, if we don't know. God only knows. But unless we get involved, Make it important, you know, and think about them, you know, then, then they'll have a chance. Then we can give them, hopefully, some type of a chance. Now, I want to, uh, in an attempt to tackle, I want to explain to you real quick, in an attempt to tackle some of these issues uh, of orphans and foster care and missions work where we go overseas to work in orphanages or adopt from overseas, an attempt to tackle this problem that we have. A few of us here uh, at First Baptist Church put together a Christ-centered ministry to provide an avenue for you to get involved. Now, I realize from working in ministry work for some number of years, getting involved means different things. 
Some of us physically will want to be there and do the work. Some of us can help financially. Some of us can pray. That's fine. Just don't do nothing. Just don't do nothing. Okay? Get involved. And so we put together this ministry. We call it HOPES. H-O-P-E-S. And it stands for Helping Orphans Physically, Emotionally, and Spiritually. And we, uh, and we base our... Uh, this ministry out of the book of Psalms, Psalms 82.3, New King James Version says, Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Now, I've got a few things just to pass out if everybody would just please take one. I think I've got enough for everybody, so you can just take them in and just pass them on to the, to the next table. Now, this ministry that we've started here at First Baptist Church, can be your avenue to get involved with helping the workers here or for you to uh, to start making a difference on the orphans. Our mission with HOPES is to follow God's command to support orphans, the fatherless, and those children who are destitute and defenseless through educating, advocating, and mobilizing the church. We believe children are precious. They are a blessing. They are from God. They require security, and they need a family. So we want to use this ministry that we've started here at First Baptist to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to a broken and a hurting world, promote church and community action through education, and just to advocate for these children. Um, we hope through the Hope's Ministry to become a leading biblical resource for orphan, orphans and foster care here in Slidell and greater New Orleans area. So, how are we going to do that? Through enlisting people, through equipping them, empowering them, and encouraging them. So, heading up the ministry is Misty Coleman. She's uh, very involved in, uh, uh, in the children's side. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Misty. She's got a degree in social work background in working foster care system and in child protective <coughs> services. Her family recently started an adoption process to adopt a little boy from Columbia. So Misty is heading things up. Uh, Paula Falgu, I don't know if any of y'all know her. Another great, great person. She, she's an adoptive mother of two boys, one through a private domestic adoption and one through an international adoption from Russia. She's a strong advocate for international orphan hosting and international orphan care for several years. So Paula, Misty, uh, Liz, I always have trouble with her last Lars name. Lars 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 <laughs> sorry Liz when you watch this video, sorry. Uh, she sponsored several children. She's adopted two daughters through the Louisiana foster care system. She continues to work closely with the Department of Children and Families Office in regards to foster care. And then you got my wife Lori and me we are certified foster parents in four different states. Being military, we move around a lot. So we would get ourselves certified and try to help out in each state that we, we would uh, move to. And we've got other members, too, that have since joined us uh, that, that the ministry is starting to grow. So I tell you that so you know that we're not some fly-by-night ministry. We're just not something that's... We're not an Alka-Seltzer ministry, as I like to call it. We're not going to fizzle and be gone, you know, tomorrow. Okay, we're here for the long haul. It is a ministry. It is your avenue to get involved, to try to, in some way, help the situation here. Uh, and there's different ways you can get involved. And, that, and I'm just about done. I'm wrapping it up now. There's a supply closet. So if you've got things you can donate to us that we can give to families, yeah, that's a way that you can get involved financially. I mean, it takes gas money to drive all over this county, uh, to drive to different churches, to spread the word, to go and meet with people. Uh, if we want to put on a seminar, we got to, you know, get the pamphlets together. That takes money. So you can help us financially. You can help us through missions. Missions, very big. There's not just orphans here in the United States. There's orphans internationally as well. I don't know, you guys, if you follow the news much, you know, Russia here lately, chopped off all adoptions. They cut off all the adoptions. You know. So it's in the news. It's in the news. Uh, 
But we, we have an avenue through this ministry for if that is what's on your heart to uh, go out and actually potentially put together a missions trip and actually go to another country to help an orphanage or, you know, branch out, reach out that way. If you feel that's the way you're being led. Uh, you can, if you know people who are thinking about getting involved, you can, uh, with foster care or adopting, you can send them our way and we can help be a resource for them. We can help uh, encourage them. Uh, you can uh, actually get involved in adoption, as a few of us in here are. Uh, most important, though, is pray. Just keep praying for this ministry. Keep praying that the families of Slido, the families of New Orleans, Southern Louisiana, Gulf Coast, United States, and every country on the face of this planet, that at some point that we start making families, not just the children, but the family's important again. Amen. So it's a bedrock thing for our foundation. All right. So in closing, I hope I just put all this as plain and as simple as I possibly could to you uh, and explain to you that orphans are not just a wasted life. Okay, I'm living proof of that. Uh, Orphans, little kids, little boys, little girls, without mothers and fathers, can go on to be great things. They just need a chance. They just need a chance. And if we neglect them, if we turn our nose the other way, you know, we're thankful the Holy Spirit didn't do that to us. And just as God loves us, we should love the children. You know, we should love the children as well. So. If you have any questions, please see me afterwards. There's information on the, the flyers that I just passed out to you, uh, how to get involved. There's a Facebook page that you can go to. If you're on Facebook, you do that. Uh, Ron is a great go-to guy. He's around here a lot. Uh, I can give you my phone number. If in any way, even if it's just simply you want to sign up, say, look, I'm going to be a prayer supporter. Okay? I'm going to be a prayer supporter. And then we can just share with you things we're up to. Keep us in prayer. I mean, that's important. That is important. So, all right, guys. That's about it. I want to thank you guys for listening. I hope I didn't get bored too much. And uh, thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. Uh, we appreciate you coming out uh, this morning. Um, we don't... Um, uh, charge anything for breakfast. If you'll leave an offering on the table, the money will go towards the cost of our GIC and the balance will go into <coughs> missions. So feel free to throw a few bucks on the table if you like. Uh, just appreciate um, this week's, we've been trying to emphasize some of the missions that are a lot closer to us. Um, people who will spend their time and their energies like uh, Chris and others that uh, really make um, a, a difference here in our community as well. We're very, very thankful for them.